Okay, so this is just a little bit more of an in-depth look at um, this evader. Doesn't quite have a name, don't think it ever will. It's just an evader, just happens to take half darts rather than full length and is loaded from the bottom rather than from the side. Initially, I bought this blaster because it had just come out. I happened upon it and bought it out of impulse. Taking it out of box, I found it rather uncomfortable. Just this section back here tends to dig into your wrist when you're holding it. Presumably it was intended as a close quarters sort of blaster. If you cock your wrist and hold it really close, it kind of works. But then there's also the trouble of the foregrip where there's the button at the front and a very, very oddly positioned thumb hole that's just too close to the front where I suspect even a child would find it kind of uncomfortable. Again, going on the thought of, well, maybe it's meant to be a CQB blaster. If you kind of curl your wrist in, it maybe kind of works or you can hold it out awkwardly with your thumb extended back a bit more. Either way, doesn't really work too comfortably. So the initial plan was just to do a straight up rewire and just have it available as a loner blaster and call it a day. But before I embarked on that, I knew there were things that had to go. And as I alluded to, this bit back here definitely needed to go. This front section, I was very tempted initially just to keep it uh, just more out of sheer laziness. It would have meant less work. But in my heart of hearts, I knew it had to go. I wasn't really planning on keeping the light, so I didn't need the trigger up front here. And the foregrip, since it's fairly uncomfortable, otherwise doesn't serve any purpose. So I'd cut just along here and down here. And it was at that point I took a break and decided to ponder on the blaster a little bit more. So again, presumably intended as a close quarters blaster, but I don't really like side loading all that much. It occurred to me, why can't it load a bit more conventionally? Certainly with a full length magazine that's just not going to work because you don't have enough room to actually pull the trigger. It then occurred to me I could use a half dart mag and that would certainly go in with plenty of room to spare. So just opening it up I had a katana adapter that had actually been sitting around for a while. I had just gotten my Zeus completed, so it did actually have a purpose once more. But I decided uh, that it would be a not too bad candidate as a magwell. You may notice that it's probably seen better days, and much of that was initially an attempt to actually get it to fit into a caliber and unfortunately I was actually grinding on the wrong parts. So I lopped off this front section to try to get the magazine as close to the flywheel cage as I could. I'd previously tried on a strife to convert it to fire half darts. The trouble was I was using this artifact um, half dart pusher and the adapter I was using although was a little bit more forward orientated than the katana adapter still positioned the mag a little bit away from the flywheel cage. So I ran into the trouble that one I actually had to lop off part of the pusher to get it to fit but also in doing so I 
made it too short and it couldn't actually push the darts into uh, the flywheels. So after lopping off the front section, I then went about cutting the shell to make space for the adapter. I did actually want to keep this screw port just so that it would be a little bit more secure, securing the whole thing in. Now it was a very big fluke that I managed to get this hole where it is. I essentially just eyeballed it and drilled down and it just so happened that I just got it at just the right spot that when I put the magazine in it lines up nicely with the pusher. In retrospect maybe I should have actually measured things out and all that but it worked. And then with the shell itself, I just very carefully ground down the posts uh, until things fit nicely. The adapter itself generally fits in quite nicely into the shell. I did use the traditional adhesive of hot glue just to hold it in place really more as a bit of a temporary measure. I'm probably going to leave it as is out of laziness, but I did consider a few other materials that might look a little bit better. Otherwise, in terms of the rest of the hardware, we've got the Neo Rhinos in the now somewhat endangered red colored finish. We've got the Kelly Industries motorboard, the Open Flywheel Project 43mm uh, cage, and then the Worker Power Wheels. The pusher itself is the Artifact Stefan pusher. There doesn't seem to be any stock anymore, but luckily enough there's plenty of 3D printed options out there. Otherwise, the wiring is set up with a MOSFET using the stock switch. I'm still not entirely sold on using the stock switch. I, again, use it more out of sheer laziness. I couldn't be bothered drill, um, grinding out the shell to make room for a proper switch. As it is... It's just a little bit squishy feeling. I've also taken out the trigger lock, so I've had to put in an extra spring just for that recoil. Otherwise, in terms of performance, here are the crony readings. I did find it interesting that the worker darts seem to actually get a higher FPS reading. My initial explanation would be that it's a small sample size. The other possibility could be that it is just a 43 millimeter crush cage, and so not particularly high crush, and just whether the worker darts happen to grip better. So I did have fun with this project overall. Just going off the beaten path. Most of the work I've done in the past has basically been fit in kits. You open up the kit, you open up the blaster, you put the things in, and you have a performance gain. It's maybe not something I'd do again, or at least not anytime soon, but it was fun. Part of me does want to go out and buy a new Evader and repeat the whole process again just to build on what I've learned from it and also to rectify some of the mistakes. One of the big mistakes I made was when I was clearing out space for the battery tray. You might notice this spring sitting up here. It's normally meant to sit out here. 
Unfortunately, in my enthusiasm for clearing all the things, I'd cleared the post that this actually sat on. It's not too bad up here. It does actually stay fairly quite securely in there. And with the other half of the shell on top, it holds in place nicely. The only trouble though is that it does have a tendency to actually push the pusher so that it's tilted down. What this does mean is that when the pusher comes back, it has a tendency to drag on the dart underneath. So this has resulted in a few things, including the dart getting tipped up to sometimes it actually just stays down there. For the most part, otherwise, it hasn't caused too many problems, aside from if I try to fire too quickly and I'm not being decisive about the trigger pull, so if I'm just going like that. Otherwise though, it's worked fairly well so far. Granted, I've only used it in one event and even then in that event it was more to use it as a bit of a sidearm. It'll be interesting to see how it goes as a primary. So yeah, that about wraps it up, uh, and if I've continued to procrastinate on this video, there should hopefully be some footage right now.